in this video a quick guide through the six types of tea. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from NanoShan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. If you're new in our channel and you're also looking to expand your tea knowledge and brewing skills, then make sure to click on the subscribe button. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoy watching this video. Gabriele, your videos are too long. I have a challenge for you. Can you explain the six tea types using only one minute or less per tea type? Matthias challenged me and I take up the challenge, so let's get started. Tea is the infusion of the leaves of Camellia sinensis, a shrub or small tree that grows in subtropical and tropical regions. There are three aspects that determine the quality of a tea. The variety of the tea plant, the environment in which it grows and how the leaves were processed. It is common to distinguish between six different types of tea. While the specific tea plant and the growing area are characterizing each of them, it is actually the processing that is the key element in distinguishing all of them. All six tea types were actually invented in China and there are many different varieties, but for each type of tea there is a key aspect of the processing that characterizes all the teas belonging to the same type. So let's have a look at each of them and let's start with white tea. White tea is the least process of all tea types. After the harvest, the leaves are withered over a long time, sometimes even days, either under the sun or in the shadow. After the withering, the leaves are dried, either as a natural continuation of the withering process or intentionally using a heat source that can be, for example, hot air, but also an oven or maybe even uh, drying on charcoal. The key element of white tea is a long, slow withering. Green tea. The leaves are cooked right after the harvest to prevent oxidation. An enzyme that is responsible for the oxidation is deactivated by heating up the leaves so that they remain green from which their name, green tea. Once oxidation has been prevented, the leaves are shaped in their final form. Shaping can be done in different ways. It can be done by using shaking or rolling machines, but also in drums or by hand in the wok. As a final step, we have the drying, and also drying can be done in different ways, for example, in the oven. Well, two of the three steps that I have mentioned, heating, shaping, and drying, can also be done together. For example, the case of lunging, where you have really all three done at the same time in the wok, where by hand you heat up the leaves, you shape them, and you dry them. Or nowadays, more commonly, in pressing machine, in automatic pressing machine. The key element of green tea is an early heating to prevent oxidation. Yellow tea. The processing of yellow tea starts pretty much in the same way as green tea. The leaves are heated and are shaped. After that, when the leaves are still humid and warm, they are piled up, wrapped, and placed in a hot and humid room where they remain for days. During this time that we call yellowing, the leaves transform, change, and get also a kind of yellowish color. After the yellowing, the leaves are dried and are ready to be drunk. The key element is the yellowing, oolong tea. The processing of oolong tea is arguably the most complex of all types of tea. It starts with a withering that is not as long as for white tea. Afterward, there is a controlled oxidation of the leaves. During this oxidation phase, the leaves are bruised once against each other, rubbed once against each other, and then left to rest. By properly alternating bruising time and resting time results in a control oxidation of the leaves. Once the desired level of oxidation is reached, you can proceed with the heating to stop the oxidation, shape them, and dry the leaves. Sometimes oolong tea, after the drying process, is also roasted, for example, in bamboo baskets over charcoal. 
the key element of Oolong tea is a slow control oxidation through bruising and resting. Black tea. After a short wittering, the leaves are heavily rolled once again each other to promote oxidation. Oxidation that takes place in dedicated hot rooms or greenhouses. Once the oxidation is complete and the leaves have turned brown completely over the whole surface, they are shaped and dried. The key element of black tea is a complete oxidation of the leaves. The name black tea was actually given by the European because of the dark appearance of the dry leaves that they were importing from China. But the Chinese called this, this type of tea actually red tea according to the color of the infusion. Dark tea. Dark tea is also known as post-fermented tea and the Chinese call it black tea. The starting of the processing is very similar to green tea. The leaves are heated and shaped. After shaping, they are piled up and put in a hot and humid environment over several days, sometimes, depending on the type of tea, up to two months. During this time, the leaves change completely. They ferment and they change color from green to brown. Once the fermentation is completed, the leaves are dried and are ready to be drunk. The Chinese call this tea black tea according to the dark color of the infusion, but since we are using black tea for another type of tea, we had to come up with another name and that's why we call it dark tea or post-fermented tea. This is the basics about the sixth type of tea. If you have enjoyed watching, give us a thumbs up and stay tuned, subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye guys.